I am basically the epitome of the crazy dog lady. I have six of my own dogs. Um, I also compete in dog shows. It's not untoward for me to drive 600 miles in a day just for a rosette, but I love it. Just surrounded by other completely crazy dog people. Excited. Obviously, I think my product's absolutely amazing, um, and I have uh, six furry product testers at home, which also think it's absolutely amazing. What is that? Spices? Kind of Greek. Uh, yeah, looks like dry spices. Hmm. I wasn't planning on actually starting a business. I still don't really know what I'm doing. Stop. But it's grown from strength to strength, and it's a bit crazy. <laughs>
it's something that I'm looking to hopefully get. Um, yeah, that's actually, I think, is quite important because that's one yeah. thing we discovered very uh, very early on, that yeah. we needed a dog nutritionist exactly. to be able to put on the back of this, not just this is what's in it, this is why it's in this it. This is why. In terms of your manufacturing mm -hmm. capacity, how much could you make at the moment? Probably between kind of five and eight hundred packets of treats um, in a week. I think you're brave <laughs> to go into manufacturing right away. Yeah, I, 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 I realised that respects, after done it. <laughs> which in some respects, if you've got a growing business, that's an asset. Yeah. So there's potential for the business to grow. Oh, massive potential, massive. But are you on Amazon? Have you approached any independent pet shops? Have you been to Pets Online? Who have you approached? I've not actually approached anyone because physical time to approach anyone hasn't been there. But I am stalked by about 30 um, kind of independent pet shops or groomers across the UK. But as yet, I've not physically approached anyone to, uh, to come on board. So there is a question mark on retail. As I said, I am not a businesswoman. But considering I'm kind of where I am already during a pandemic, I think I'm onto something pretty good. The entrepreneur admits she's yet to really push the sales button on her product. Sarah Davies now wants to know more about how Dom's business nearly went to the dogs. Dom! Hi. One thing I was going to ask is just talk me through what happened with the fire. Don't have a tumble dryer in your unit because um, that wiped everything out. I was actually at my first kind of trade show and I was setting up as everything was burning down. So that was pretty rubbish, can't lie. Thankfully, no humans, dogs, anything was injured. Everything was fine in that sense, um, but it did wipe out my whole production setup. But you had insurance money and you were able to use it to rebuild and... Um, I didn't have insurance. That was a tough lesson, tough lesson to learn. But as I said, I've came back from it. I it's have insurance now, promise you. It's good that you bounce back. Yeah, I had um, a whole, whole host of dogs across the UK that were desperate for the liver snaps to come back, so I couldn't let them down. Dom. Hi. My dogs, I, whenever we go out for a walk, I've got to put a packet of treats in the pocket because otherwise the Skylar particularly runs off. The only way I can get her back is to bribe her with a, with yeah. a treat. I'm going to focus really on capacity. Yeah. So 800 packets is not a lot at the moment. No. What do you need to spend to go to sort of five to 10 to 20,000 a week? So what I'm looking at is um, the industrial drying ovens are around about 20,000 pounds, and that is what's going to take me to thousands and thousands of packets a week. So let's just have a look at that. So if you did, f let's say 5,000 a week, what would that give you in terms of revenue and profit? <laughs> um... I'm oh, going to test you now. Yeah, you're going to try and make me do maths in my head right now. And um, so if we're looking at 5,000 a week, that would be... I'm going to help you. No, don't, don't. Oh, come on, Deborah. She's done so well. <laughs> I would you. really love you to do it, because the thing is, if I'm going to invest, I could give Sarah my money, and I'm sure she'll, you know, I feel confident she'd look after it. But I'm, I need you to tell me, because yeah. you're going to run this business on your own, I'm assuming. You're not asking me to come in and run it, are you? No, no, not to run it, just to so that's why help I... me in the business side. <laughs> exactly. So, 5,000 um, so revenue? 5,000 packets a week. Um, What would be the cost of 5,000? Um, so the physical cost would be um, essentially just under 5,000. And what's your average then, selling price? Basically £3.33. Um, you are then, what, 15,000? So 15k Ish. revenue. So just simple terms, and that's £10,000 gross profit a week. Yep. So that's 40,000 gross profit a month. Yep. Peter Jones struggles to pin down Dom's future potential for profit. And the entrepreneur's shaky grasp of her business hasn't gone unnoticed by Sarah Davies. Dom, you've got this lovely, positive energy about you, and I bet it would be great to hang out with you. <laughs> Thank you. Should we go for a drink? Yes, <laughs> I would get love that. <laughs> um, but there's something you've said, and you've said it twice now, that's just massively worried me. You keep saying, 
I'm not a businesswoman. I know, I'm not sorry. A businesswoman. <laughs> and, I, and I'll be really honest, I don't have really the time, the inclination, really the desire yeah. to get into specifically the pet food industry. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, I won't be investing in amount. Sarah's so spot on, because I've been feeling it sitting here. It's a really, really slightly disappointing thing that you've said too many times, and I wrote it down. I didn't plan to start a business. I need a mentor. I want to invest in a passionate person that this is the one chance they've got, whereas I'm not receiving that. So sadly, I'm out. Dom's admission to a lack of business now makes her too much of a risk for Sarah Davies and Peter Jones, who both make an exit. Will Tej Lalvani have similar reservations? Dom, I sort of disagree with Peter's point. In terms of being a business person, you've yeah. demonstrated that you can create something that's a business and you're turning over and there's a demand for your product. Unfortunately for me, it's just not a space that I'm currently actively looking at. So it's not going to be an investment for me today, but good luck. I'm out. So, I love a lot of what you're doing. I think you can get this to a size that you're going to make money out of and you're going to enjoy. Yeah. To step into the next arena, I've been on this journey, I can tell you, my goodness, is it hard. We ended up turning over millions of pounds and, and making very little money. You can probably hear where I'm going. I'm out. Deborah Meaden is once bitten, twice shy in the dog treat world, and she becomes the fourth dragon out. Just Tuka Suleiman remains. He's also previously put his cash into canine companies. Will he throw this entrepreneur a bone? Dom. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, as most of the dragons have said, you lack that business strategy. The fact that you've not approached Amazon, you've not approached distributors, but sometimes in a business, you know, you, you've got to start with a product. Yeah. And one thing that you've achieved is the product. Yeah. So there is a lot to do here. Mm-hmm. But because I've got my foot in the door, yeah. I could well be interested. But it comes at a price. So I'm going to make you an offer. Ah! I will give you all the money, but I want 35%. OK. Yeah. Tuka Suleiman makes an offer for the business, but is asking for more than three times the equity stake Dom wanted to give away. <sighs> Can she earn her business stripes by negotiating a more favorable deal? I'm not gonna lie, the percentage to give away right now because I, I am so passionate about it and it is my baby, I really don't think I could go as high as that. I would love if we could kind of meet in the middle at 20%. What do you think? I'll give you all of the money for 35%, but when I get my money back within 18 months, I go down to 25%. <sighs> um, oh, gosh. OK. Um, would you be prepared to drop to the 20% after your initial investment was back? <laughs> How can I refuse a please like that? <laughs> <laughs> OK, I would drop to 20%. OK. Deal done. OK. Great. <laughs> well done. Thank you so much. After a dogged piece of negotiation, Dom walkies out of the den with the full £50,000 cash injection she came looking for. Thank you. And a dragon with plenty of bite on her books. Oh, my God. Opie, oh, we got a dragon. Yes. Me, you and Tucker are going to take over the world. What do you reckon, pal? <laughs> oh, so chuffed.
That was a good one, Tuka. And you've all got a lifetime supply of free dog treats yeah. now. That, yeah. My dogs will eat that in about one sitting, I should think. Yeah, they will. They will. Demolish it. And first to face Peter Jones and the rest of the dragons, a former stand-up comedian who's gone full circle with his latest invention. I used to do a lot of jokes about poop, and now I'm literally designing products to pick up doggy poop. We can do it. Looks like a half-cut tennis ball. <laughs> and should the five fiery investors bear their teeth today, Darren has a trick up his sleeve from his time on the stage. I used to deal with a lot of hardcore hecklers, and the way I dealt with that was to imagine everybody's naked. So, dragons, you're all naked. <laughs> Darren's moments away from bearing all about his business. But will his pitch bring the house down in the den? Hello, dragons. Uh, my name is Darren O.F. Pfizer. My company's uh, Noble Pets Limited, and we design innovative pet products. We're looking for £50,000 sterling, for 10% equity in our company. Uh, we have lots of products. I've got the Nest and Go. It's a pet bed travel system. All you do is close it up like this here. It's got straps inside of it to keep it shut. Even has a strap here for putting the seatbelt in. We also have the Gotta Hose dog brush. It's got long fingers on it for really massaging the suds out of the dog. But what I'm here to show you today is our Pooper Scooper potty mouth. Comes in two sizes, big for big poops and small for small poops. It's got a padded mechanism that allows the biodegradable bags to come through it like a tongue. So I just wrap the bag around the ball like this. And I've got some poop I made earlier. Now it's OK. It's made from sugar, cocoa and oats. Tastes quite good. But I ain't eating it. This guy's eating it. So I pick up the poop. Seals in the bag quite nicely. It's got magnetic teeth that keeps it shut. And then you double seal it by closing it in here. I have a box of poop for each of you <laughs> to try out. But it's all right, you've got a potty mouth in there as well. Thank you very much. A range of pet products fronted by an innovative pooper scooper is the offering Darren Lewitt Pfizer hopes will scoop up an investment today. How a poop's in there. Yes, it does taste quite good. <laughs> He's seeking £50,000 in return for a 10% stake in his business. So you pull it out, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> don't worry, after the first two or three times, you get it perfect. I got the hang of it first Ah, oh, you're a genius. Tuka Suleiman may have claimed the prize of entrepreneur's pet, but Tej Lalvani is wondering if pets of the four-legged variety were the driving force behind Darren's doggy designs. What made you come up with these products? I presume you've got lots of dogs. Lots of dogs and lots of kids. OK. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of poop in my house there. So I'm sitting in the garden, drinking a glass of wine in my dressing gown, and my two oldest kids were picking up snails with a tennis ball. It was broken. I already fell off my chair, and I was like, there you go. Wow. So is your kid's inspiration to create the pooper scooper? Yeah. Um, what has got you to this point in your life where you're coming up with these types of inventions? What have you done previously? What's your day job? Before this, I, I had my own product design company. We did it for 15 years and I used to design products for other people. So I decided it's about time I started developing products which I can launch. Can you give some examples of some products that you've created that have been successful that we might recognise? One was called the ladder limb. And what's that? It's a shaft with a rubber end in it. You stick it into a, a, a ladder and you hang a bucket on it. Oh, came here, didn't it? He did, yeah, yeah. So he was, he was one of my customers. He actually said to say hello, Peter. <laughs> really? So he... <laughs> but you did the product design for yeah, it? Yeah, we did the product design and we, and we helped to get the manufacturing for him. And we also helped him introduce the distributors as well. Fantastic. And I think he actually he got it in B&Q and so forth. Brilliant. The entrepreneur's previous track record in product design has clearly impressed Peter Jones. Tej Lalvani now wants to get stuck into the numbers to find out if there's any brass where there's muck. Tell me, what are your sales so far? Pooper Scrooper was made last January, and we've sold about $40,000 worth of that product to a big US distributor. I focused first in the USA because I knew people that were, had, were big distributors there and that would be interested. And what is your monthly rate of sale of that product right now? Uh, well, at the moment, uh, the distributor bought a load of them, and he's currently selling them, so he's testing the product at the moment, so it's still quite new. So you yes, don't know I... the rate of sale at the moment, or no, you do? No, I don't. I don't. But if it was last year, by now you should have something. 
tell you the truth, that particular product has been a little bit slow because we haven't really put too much money in marketing. So tell me about the UK market. Amazon in the UK, we probably sold about 50 or 60 units. So it hasn't really been huge sales. In the, the last? In the last uh, year. Really? Why do you think that is? Why is it not selling? Uh, really, I think it's to do with marketing. You know, when you put Pooper Scooper on there, there is lots of other Pooper Scoopers that come up. So really, when I start focusing on marketing, I'll drive the sales on that. Have you got any other distributors internationally apart from your US distributor? No. I haven't. I Have haven't. you tried? Have you No, actually, I haven't. I've been so focused on developing the products that I haven't really been pushing it that hard. The plan is to create lots of multimedia, lots of video. You've got lots of plans, but you need to start doing them. You've sold one order to a distributor in the US, but I haven't seen any evidence that it's selling through and there's a demand for this. So today, it's not really going to be an investment for me. I'm out. Darren's pet product pitch is proving anything but a walk in the park, as the poor sales so far lead to Tej Lalvani becoming the first dragon to bow out. Is dog lover Peter Jones poised to get the entrepreneur's proposal back on track? I think it's a neat idea. I walk three dogs, so I've got three different leads. Honestly, I'm like Mr Bean on a walk because I'm tangled up with the dogs. One dog wants to go one thing, there's a rabbit going one way, <laughs> and they all want to hair off. But the thing is, I just feel that that's a bit big. If I had three of those, it'd be like a ball and chain for dogs. Yeah, well, uh, I haven't had that complaint so far. Uh, well, you I... wouldn't know, though. You haven't had feedback because you sold 40,000 to another country that you're not tracking the sales of. That's true. I'm going to just say where I am. You're a really creative guy. And you know, well done for getting a great business for yourself. But it's not something that I'm going to invest in today. I'm out. Darren, hi. Your dog bed, I think, is really neat and really nicely designed. So that's great. But this piece here, I don't like it. It's actually, A, very fiddly. B, I've got big dogs, four big dogs. There is no way, if that wasn't a really solid, neat poo, there is no way that would pick it up. Because there isn't much body to that. So if you're trying to actually scrape, it kind of doesn't. Most dog poo, I can assure you, is going to struggle. So I'm afraid I won't be investing. I'm out. Darren, I don't believe you are the full package. And there is a lot of other work needs to go around the inventor to make the successful business. That comes at a cost. And the problem is, the cost that that comes at means that I would need to take too much of your business to make it feel comfortable for me to do that. So I won't be investing. I'm out. The inventor's pooper scooper offering falls foul of three more dragons, meaning that any hopes of picking up investment now rests solely with Tunka Suleiman. He's building a portfolio of pet businesses. Has the inventor's product range piqued his interest? 12 months ago, I said to myself, I want to be in the pet industry. And the area that I'm lacking is development, new products. And, you know, I think what, what interests me is, is you. All right. <laughs> it, it's the fact that you've got all these ideas I think, combined, we could do something. I can help you with your sourcing, distribution, and all you've got to focus is creating product. I'm going to make you an offer. I will offer you all of the money for 35%. Tuka Suleiman eyes the makings of a productive partnership and tables an offer. But his request for 35% of the business is three and a half times more equity than the 10% that's up for grabs, leaving Darren with a difficult decision. 
Uh, 35 is a lot. It is a lot. Look, I know, I know what I can bring to the party. I could catapult this business. Is there any negotiation? I'll tell you what I'll do is if I get my money back within 18 months, I'll drop to 30%. We'll take the pet market by storm. I know, yeah, I think we could. So for that reason, I think that I'd like to go with the deal. Great. Thank you very much. I'm very excited to work well with done. you. Well done. Very Thank excited. Success for the former stand-up comedian as he walks away with the £50,000 he asked for and a dragon on board who can propel his pet product proposition into the big time. Doing stand-up comedy and doing the Dragon's Den, the Dragon's Den was definitely more intimidating. <sighs> God, I was mad. <laughs> but lucky enough, I didn't imagine anything naked this time. <laughs>Good luck, Chili. You'll smash it. You don't need the luck, love. We do. <laughs> we love what we do, and we're passionate about what we do, and that makes doing what we do a lot easier. Here we go. Oh, my God. The dog-doting duo are fully aware that there is someone else in the building today that also has a penchant for pooches. Excited! We know Deborah's a dog fan, so we're quite excited about putting this out to Deborah. Um, but to be honest, I think all of them have something that they could give to our business. Yeah. As well as their canine companion, the pair come with stacks of self-belief. Yeah, I'm quite confident, otherwise I, I, I don't think I'd have come today. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Dragons. My name's Jamie and this is my wife, Gemma. We are UK Sniffer Dogs. We're here today to ask you for £70,000 for a 15% stake in our business. We're course providers for pet dog owners and dog trainers. We have online courses and practical courses specifically in scent detection. The benefits of scent work are endless for the dog and the owner. We liken scent detection to mindfulness for dogs. So sniffing reduces anxiety and stress in dogs. We have brought along today a handler and her dog, who is one of our trainers, and she's going to demonstrate a little bit about what it is that we teach to the pet dogs. And what we would like is if one of you guys would volunteer to hide um, a couple of scents for our dog, Chili. Is there anybody that's willing to do I'll that? I'll do it. Hey. Stress-relieving scent detection courses for dogs is the canine concepts Jamie and Gemma Pound are pitching. They're offering to hand over 15% of their business in return for £70,000. Perfect. And with the scents now in place, it's time for a doggy demo. We can obviously visually see that, but dogs don't see red, so the dog will have to use their nose to see it, uh, to find it. Touch. When the dog finds the scent, what they should do is stay on it. So they'll point towards it with their nose, Yes. It's very clear yeah. that that's the scent. <laughs> well done, Chili. Good. So if you can move her on. Yeah. Chili's learned that she gets a reward when she puts her nose in there. Move her off for the treat, Rachel. <laughs> okay. Come on, Chili. That's Let's it. Search. So I'll... That's it. She can search everything. <laughs> yes, it's good girl. Yeah, well done. Good girl. well done. Well done, Chili. Good girl, Chili. Oh, well done. I think Chili deserves a round of applause. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and Rachel, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good girl. Chili challenge over, Peter Jones is first with the questions. And it appears he has some pooch problems of his own to sort out at home. It was quite good to watch. We have just recently, over the last year, got a husky. Mm -hmm. And she just digs everything up. I mean, the damage is just unbelievable. She just chews on everything, has done for a year. Any advice? Digging and chewing can be a stress behaviour. Sorry, is this a personal yeah. one-to-one? <laughs> Are you having... I, I see what's happening here. I can sort this out here. for you if we have a chat <laughs> afterwards, <laughs> definitely. Sorry, I thought it'd just be nice to... No, but it's a good no, follow-on. It's purely selfish. <laughs> <laughs> so, a bit about the business. Um, how long have you been operating and what are your sales? So, UK Sniffer Dogs has been running since 2018, so it's a very new business. In year one, we turned over £13,000. Year two was 
<laughs> Isn't it? 60. 60. 60,000 pounds was year two um, turnover. And year three has obviously this been year. a partial year. So 24,000 pound turnover so far, and net profit is 4,000. OK, can you just explain how it works? You send a trainer or you, the dog comes to the trainer? So um, Rachel is from Manchester and she runs dog training classes. She's come to one of our courses and we've taught her the content to go away and teach. When you train somebody, what percentage do they have to give to you on their income? They do. Nothing, nothing. How do you operate without getting some form of commission on an ongoing business? Because for me to be really interested or an investor to be interested, you've got to see how you're going to get, A, some money back, yeah. ultimately, and how their business could grow. Could this become, you know, the big... The online... So, the big yeah, business so that we think we it could become. We have thought about this, and um, the way that we see the business going is more instructors coming through our doors, but also taking it globally. So it would be kind of like a franchise. The entrepreneurs bat back Peter Jones's concerns about how their business can bring in the bucks by outlining a strategy for global growth. Next to try and sniff out if their company could be a cash creator is dog-loving Deborah Meaden. I've got four Vizslas, can you imagine? <laughs> um, and um, we actually do use scent training, so I certainly get the need for it. And it isn't just about the dog. It just makes your life so much better when you've got a happy environment for your dog. Um, but I do want to understand the size of, of the business. Now, are there any examples out there in the dog world of dog trainers that have actually turned it into a big business model? <sighs> There's there lots, are, mm. there's lots of uh, organisations, but the problem is dog training is not regulated. Yeah, no, Okay, I know so that. you don't need to have a qualification to become a dog trainer. Yeah. You can be a retired dog handler and tell someone you're a dog trainer. But that kind of sat behind my question. What we did was talk to other people and we said, we've got this issue, who do you know? Oh, you don't want to go to so-and-so. They're not yeah. very good, but I tell you what, she's brilliant. So it's a very, very word-of-mouth industry because it's not regulated. And I'm also going to probably look for something that's multifaceted. So, again, in our dogs, we found some are scent dogs, some like food reward, one of them likes touch reward. What I want to do is find somebody who can say, this is how to work best with your dog, as opposed to just scent training. Deborah Meaden wonders if the entrepreneurs are being too dogmatic in their approach by only offering one kind of activity for their four-legged friends. Tej Lalvani now wants to find out how the idea for helping to make hounds happy came about. Tell me about how you guys got into this business. So, um, from a child, I've always wanted to work with animals. Um, I was a veterinary nurse. That's when I did my first dog training course, which is where I met my husband, Jamie. <laughs> and then the rest is history. <laughs> um, I used to be an electrician. Uh, so, ten years ago, I was burnt 45% of my body and it... <laughs> and it put me back and I was physically hurt, mentally... Uh... Sorry. I had to put myself back together physically and I had to put myself back together mentally. And my dad, who's not with me anymore, it's even harder, suggested that I got a puppy. Uh, because I was having surgery and all types of different things and physio and my only way out was getting out of my pup and getting out of my dog. And my dog, who's also not with us anymore, um, he was a difficult dog, he was a hard dog to work. And scent detection was definitely that mindfulness for him. It calmed him down as a dog, made him a lot easier to handle. Um, so I retrained and that's when I met Gemma. And I started following Gemma around on a few courses, and... <laughs> Gemma... Is that technically <laughs> stalking? Gemma booked a it course, was a bit. I booked a course, and one thing led to another, and we set up our own dog training business. Um, well, wow. yeah. well, you've been through some hard times, clearly. And, Sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no need to apologise at all, but, uh, but you're here, which is incredible. Jamie reveals personal fortitude by dealing with a traumatic experience and then turning it into a business idea. 
But will it be enough to convince Deborah Meaden to put her money into this duo's dream? Guys, I'm going to tell you where I am. My heart would love to do this. But I think you've got a structural issue. I almost don't want you to get investment. You might, you might get it today. For you to succeed in what you're doing, you're going to have to have a system, a quality control system, that says when you've actually trained somebody and they go out there and train, that you can check that they are up to wearing your logo and your brand out there. And that's when the whole franchising model becomes really, really complicated. And I promise you, you're going to end up doing the stuff that you do not enjoy about your business because you are going to have to stop training dogs. That's the nicest no I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, an, it's a it's, nice it's... no because it's true. I don't even say it with a heavy heart because I think that, in hindsight, you might feel the same. But anyway, okay. uh, I won't be investing. I'm out. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you. A nice no, but a first no nonetheless as Deborah Meaden feels the entrepreneur's plans to franchise are flawed. And it appears Tuka Suleiman also has reservations about the pair's path to profitability. You come across very well, but I've not heard a clear strategy in which it would tell me that in two years' time, you were doing a million, two million turnover. So for that reason, I'm out. Um, look, I really like you guys. I think you've presented really well. And, you know, I think that £70,000 for something where the business model has not been proven yet, unfortunately, it's not an investment for me. So good luck, guys, but I'm out. You two are lovely. But I think this is a great business for you to make money out of this, but not necessarily for me to make money out of this. So I don't think it's, a, it's the right business for me. I'm out. Thank you. Three dragons drop out in quick succession. Only Peter Jones remains. He needs help with his husky. So will he throw Jamie and Gemma a bone? Firstly, inspirational, really fantastic. The journey you've been on and where you've got to. And I actually think you've got a business. I think you've got a business that you can grow yourselves and it will be successful. From my perspective, a business like this, as it scales, it's immediately quite tough because it's really predicated on one or two individuals and there's only two of you. Yeah. And at £70,000 as well, I actually think you've come in with quite a punchy amount of money. If I'm going to invest in something like this, I need to take a much larger slice of the pie. What slice would you like? <laughs> well, <laughs> what are you and, looking and, for? And, and, then it, and then it gets into the fact that I don't want to own so much that it puts our relationship disjointedly. For me, sadly, for that reason, I'm out. And I'll still help you out with that husky. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, I need help. <gasps> Peter Jones declines the deal, and Jamie and Gemma's dreams of investment are over. We don't get to talk to the wall. <laughs> I'll talk to the lift. <laughs> they leave the den without the £70,000 they were seeking, or a dragon as their business bulldog. I don't think I've ever been so pleased that somebody didn't get an investment. <laughs> I, I don't think they could believe how lovely you were. We're going to carry on doing what we do best. We've got this far um, on our own. Watch this space. <laughs>